Hey everyone, this is Galactic Crusade to come back here with another video. I had to do this uh, in English so for my. <laughs> for the millions of Galactic Crusade fans all over the globe, from USA to Japan, from Iceland to South Africa, all the corners of the known universe, millions, billions, trillions of fanatic attendees, followers. Worshippers, I would say, of Galacticus X, the supreme leader of this and all the known un and unknown universes. Okay, we're going to play a little uh, Raiden 3 on the PlayStation 2, emulated on the MacBook Air. M1 It's a superb game for a superb uh, system emulated on a superb laptop Everything is superb in this video A superb channel hosted by a superb uh, YouTuber followed by superb uh, followers and uh, eagerly awaiting your superb comments on the superb uh, comment section below. For those who have uh, been following me, they have noticed uh, a pattern of uh, frequent uh, Raiden games appearing lately. I wouldn't say I'm obsessed with this game. I just played 24-7 uh, Partly because I'm bored And partly because it's the easiest thing I can play I just open uh, the emulator window And uh, I can play during the breaks While working Simulation is uh, very good for uh, <coughs> killing some time between uh, work hours and it could prove uh, to be very bad for the productivity so uh, by all means play your favorite uh, emulated retro games on your uh, business computer with a warning of caution always prioritize your uh, obligations and then play your favorite games so as opposed to the purely bitmap graphics 2D games that preceded this one, the Radiant 3 is uh, 3D as you, are, as you clearly see. This opens exciting new uh, opportunities for uh, new effects, new impressive uh, set pieces, and uh, moves the whole. Uh, top-down shooter uh, formula forward some uh, hardcore retro gamers will not like this as they draw uh, a very well-defined line at the 16 to 32 bit era and uh, they don't consider this a uh, retro game but uh, if you are a little more uh, relaxed in your uh, rules and preferences you can very easily classify region 3 uh, in the same uh, vein of uh, retro games of retro shoot em ups and I think it's a very, very, very wealthy, 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 
<laughs> worthy, worthy, worthy addition to any retro retro gamer uh, retro gamers uh, collection. But I think it's very pricey if you want to have this game uh, on your physical game collection. I haven't checked prices, but I suspect it's very expensive since it's a uh, Japanese import. If you play this game on a big screen, it may be a little hard on the uh, hard, a little difficult uh, for the eyes with all this uh, fast-paced action and the sudden changes in uh, perspective. One thing that uh, that personally I find uh, much better uh, than the earlier games it's the the music the soundtrack of the game is much better than the previous uh, games so I made some uh, mates agree and uh, think that Raiden 1 and Raiden 2 music are iconic is iconic but uh, I beg to differ I have uh, much I prefer much more the uh, much much better the uh, uh, music of Raiden 3 and um, since I grew I grew up in my late twenties uh, listening to this kind of music it has in my mind it has been the the peak of, uh, of uh, of electronic uh, music excellence. I love this the, the electronic music from the, the late 90s, early to 2000s. For example, I, I, I absolutely adore the music, uh, the soundtrack, uh, the music score from the from the Wipeout games, the first Wipeout games. This is the kind of music I like. The people and influences from uh, techno, trance, uh, tribal music. Of course, I play the, uh, this uh, session on uh, on the easiest level. That's why you can progress uh, relatively easy. Otherwise, uh, it would be very difficult to to go on. have to carefully pick which type of, uh, of weapon you select and your strategy because different uh, different bosses are easier to beat with different weapons This is a fantastic game to play on an OLED TV with all those uh, bright colors.
By the way, I don't have an OLED TV. I just imagine how it would be to play it on a 65 inch OLED display. In other news, I don't know if you follow the news of the enthusiast hardware game market and the whole fiasco with the, the retraction of uh, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 4080 12 gigabyte version. Yes, we are at uh, at that at that stage now we are unlaunching unlaunching has become a, an official term Nvidia says we are unlaunching the the weaker the weakest of the two 4080 cards because uh, it's considerably weaker than the 16 gigabyte model and therefore it's terrible terrible value and it's obvious that uh, their uh, nvidia's marketing uh, uh, did an absolutely terrible job at uh, naming this particular card, the uh, 4080, because for all intents and purposes, this uh, should have been a 4080 class card. It's not just uh, well. Of course, you can uh, read. Uh, you can read. You can uh, watch uh, dedicated videos on this. But uh, the summary is uh, the summary is that. Uh, Nvidia has launched two new 80 class uh, graphics cards 4080 16 gigabytes for 1200 euros or dollars suggested uh, retail price and uh, a 4080 card with 12 gigabytes of RAM of video RAM at 900 and the reality is that uh, those two cards did not different differ only in terms of uh, memory size but they are completely different cards the core the graphics score is uh, different um, the shader units, uh, compute units of each card are uh, different. They are di completely different, different cards. And uh, the funny thing is that uh, upon hearing this news, uh, many. Many commentators, ma ma many hardware reviewers, YouTubers, etc., uh, held this as a victory of the consumer and the pressure they they applied on the Nvidia, nagging them and uh, complaining that they should not uh, they should uh, cancel this card. Which they did, but <laughs> personally, I don't think it's any sort of victory because uh, if you consider at the same time that they have uh, glowing reviews of the 4090, a card uh, which has extremely good performance, but it's extremely expensive starting at the suggested price of uh, 
sixteen hundred dollars. Well, you have to remember that sixteen hundred is not the final price you will pay, because on top of this, you have to pay taxes, which here in Greece is for twenty-four percent. So. 1600 becomes 2000 euros and of course 1600 plus taxes that only applies for the early birds or for those who can uh, get these cards either directly from Nvidia or from the very early buyers who manage to secure an order very early which is uh, practically never for our local market here in Greece. So in reality, the lowest price you can uh, find now for a 4090 is uh, around 24 to 2500 euros, 2500 euros, 2500 euros for their flagship card. So, as you understand, this is quite preposterous because um, the reality is now, after the, the mining craze of the uh, last couple of years, prices have solidified in the upper tier above 1000 buck, even for the, for the flagship for the flagship level cards. So you are compelled now to pay 1200, 1200 bucks for the flagship 80 class series and uh, 1600, which is not 1600, it's 2000 for the Halo product, the 4090, if you are one of those people who want the absolute best. So the dark reality for uh, the vast majority of uh, gamers, of PC gamers, is that they cannot possibly afford this, uh, these uh, top tier cards, considering the the recession that we are entering in uh, economies, not just here in my country, not not just in Europe, but uh, globally. Uh, Nvidia has uh, has the balls to ask for such steep prices, even after the uh, the crypto mining crash demanding such uh, exorbitant amounts of money just to play games because remember the RTX series even the 4090 are not some uh, some cards specifically designed for uh, creators and for professionals they have dropped this uh, distinction they don't have a titan class series there are no <coughs> special drivers that uh, perform better in uh, business and uh, professional applications And so, 
for example, personally, if I wanted to pay to have a, a 49 card, if you if you add taxes, my salary would not be sufficient to pay for just one card, which is quite ridiculous. To demand a whole salary for just one component for your gaming PC. And if you add to that the new requirements for uh, new memory DDR5, new motherboards, the newest uh, processors from uh, from AMD and the upcoming uh, processors, the Raptor Lake from Intel. If you want to completely refresh your uh, gaming PC, you will be called to pay extremely high prices. So, modern gaming PC right now is uh, crazy. It's very expensive and uh, personally I think if you want to refresh partly, partially or uh, completely your uh, gaming PC you have to look to the current generation or to the previous generation of uh, processors and uh, graphics cards And of course turn to retro gaming, which is much cheaper for those who can, uh, who like this kind of games. And I would have another argument for returning to uh, older games like this one I'm playing right now or perhaps more less demanding in the games and uh, I'm bad on the uh, AAA scene altogether because personally I think AAA games now are uh, the content if you uh, if you take away very few exceptions like um, Cyberpunk 27 and uh, perhaps Elden Rings uh, the vast majority of uh, of AAA games have turned to cinematic soap operas and they inject so much nonsense and so much uh, political correctness in their stories and of course that doesn't absolve uh, the games from uh, earlier decades if you remember uh, after 9-11 uh, all, this, all this proliferation of uh, war games clearly aimed to uh, to lift the spirits of Americans and to paint uh, the American army as uh, a freedom a liberating force you know the games uh, the gaming industry has always uh, been like that since it became uh, a household, uh, household name in entertainment uh, besides uh, the film industry exactly the same propaganda 
the same themes what we see in the movies happens in the in triple a games there is a vast amount of uh, of games that are just quality games entertaining and they don't try to indoctrinate you they don't try to inject certain political uh, or social views just pure gaming for fun for escapism just to get your mind to relax and uh, let you escape for a while this uh, stupid crazy reality we are living in So as I leave you with uh, some more gameplay from this uh, excellent shoot em up I remind you that uh, the best game to play is smart economic, it doesn't require much money use what you have, uh, the systems you have it's okay if they are not uh, the latest and the greatest it's smart to save money in the difficult times that we are living and trust me they are going to get it's going to get much much harder as the winter progresses Don't fall victims of the marketing tactics or uh, peer pressure or uh, the companies uh, who try to instill this uh, sentiment, this uh, fear of missing out as they say. Because you know very well that uh, what is shining in you this year next year will be just middle of the road in a couple of years it will be very cheap much cheaper to acquire second gen or through discounts Take care of your systems, enjoy them, where they need, uh, where is, uh, where you deem necessary, do some uh, targeted upgrades to increase your storage, increase uh, the computing power, but uh, if you are not made of money don't fall victim of the marketing departments they just want to make money they don't care about your financial state
be smart and enjoy your games whatever they they may be modern or retro it's what makes you happy that's all that matters so this is Galactic X saying goodbye